Well, this is a video for all those teenagers out there that keep emailing me on YouTube about more details of how to make their own crazy creations like Dave Rock did. Put weed eater motors on bicycles or chainsaw motors on skateboards. You know what you're doing, it's all pretty easy. First, Every small engine has a magneto that produces a spark when the magnets of the flywheel rotate past it. High voltage output wire goes to the spark plug. This is the kill wire. Every magneto on every machine has a kill plug. The one wire comes out of here, goes to a switch, and the other wire on the switch just goes to the metal body. So when the switch makes connection, it actually shorts it out and shuts the machine off. So, for example, on my bicycle, I've got a switch on the handlebar. One wire is just going to the handlebars for ground to kill it, and the other wire travels all the way down here to the motor, and it goes to that magneto, which would plug in right there. Others have asked me how to hook up the throttle. Well, every carburetor, like this one here on this chainsaw, has two bolts going through it to hold it to the engine block. Well, on this particular model, the chainsaw, I made a little plate that sticks out that screws on to one of those bolts that holds the carburetor on. And on the plate, I just got a little bicycle cable holder fitting like it's on the end of your brake cable or attaches to the lever and mounted that onto that little metal plate a piece of bicycle brake cable a bicycle brake handle modified a little plate that I made and so that's how it works and that little bolt I weld in there with a nut is an end stop so that if I squeeze my throttle too hard it won't snap the cable or bend the lever in the carburetor so you can see how it works. These are the wires I made for my kill. Uh, they broke. They used to be attached up here to the little kill switch. But one wire goes to that magneto and the other one just goes to the metal on the engine block. If you want to make your little motor go faster, have more power, you have to some, drill some more holes in your exhaust or take your exhaust apart and take out the screen that's inside and some have a big plate that blocks the flow of the gases and you have to drill holes in that too. That's called increasing the flow and decreasing the back pressure. Chainsaw motors generally are better for making devices like this because they have more power and more cc's than weed eaters do and they definitely have more torque. But whenever you get more power on a, a two-stroke engine by doing that, you have to play with the carburetor. Most carburetors have two screws on them. These two screws are factory set for emissions so if you turn them to try to give more fuel, it'll smoke more may give you more power but make more smoke and that will increase your emission so they put these plastic caps on and if you need to do anything with your carburetor to make it work better you can't so you've got to get your side cutters and bite the hell out of this plastic break it up and chew it up and rip it off and then all you're left with is two screws now you can adjust them your mixture that says H on it that says H right there. That means high speed mixture. The one that says L means low speed mixture. You want your low speed mixture one adjusted so that it runs the fastest and smoothest at idle. And you want your high speed one adjusted so that when you have it full throttle, wide open, fast as it can go, it sounds like it has the most power and runs the best. And that's how you set the carburetors.
There is another way to give the carburetors even more fuel flow depending on what kind of exhaust you put on your motor. And that means removing the carburetor, taking off this plate, taking off another metal plate in there. And there's a tiny screen in there and there's tiny passageways. Then you have to get to your mother's thinnest sewing needle. Sometimes leave it with a point and sometimes file a little chisel edge on it. And then you have to scratch little tiny holes in there and just make them the slightest bit bigger. Don't ever use a drill. It'll always screw your carburetor up. All drills are too big to do this job. Uh, the next problem when you're building these devices is the clutch. Chainsaws and weed eaters don't have the right clutch to attach normal chains to or pulleys to. As you can see the teeth are funny. So you, like me, have to grind off all that tooth part and weld a pulley onto this clutch or you can weld a bicycle sprocket or some kind of gear onto this clutch and then you can modify the clutch so that you can make it into something useful. Mounting your engine is the next trick. They don't really have any place to make mounts so I had to make a clamper mount thing that goes on here. Goes under the skateboard like that and screwed on. And it's got rubber packed around inside. And then here I took the handle off, made a plate, drilled a hole through it, then put the screw back in through the handle and that's how that motor mount's made. And then there's another similar one on the, under, on the other side. The other end of my throttle for my bicycle is just a shortened brake lever. So I have my normal front brakes and then I have a shorter lever which is like a thumb lever on a quad, but it's just a shortened brake lever, and that's it. The carburetor is here. I had to make a little mounting plate to hold my cable in, and then I tied part of the bicycle cable to a piece of the cable that came from the weed eater. So that's how my throttle works. And of course, whenever you do this, this long brake cable has a lot more friction than the little cable a weed eater had. So as you see, there's a spring in there. You have to figure out how to mount a bigger spring than comes with the original carburetor so that it pulls your throttle back so you don't have to end up going down the road stuck at full throttle, get into another high-speed police chase. This weed eater has a chainsaw style looking clutch right inside there and then the output sh where the output shaft came out I made a little adapter to put a sprocket onto it. The total gear ratio if you turn this 13 times the back wheel will turn once. You got to get your gear ratios right or your machine will barely move. Where the pedal crank used to be that's where I made my what's called a jack shaft. That gives me my total gear reduction. And you've got to have a big sprocket on the rear wheel instead of like before when it had a little sprocket. So let's see if this thing will start this year. It's always on unless you're pushing the kill button. Give it full choke. Prime the gas primer a few times. Pull it. Wow. Take it off choke part way. 